my very organized stuff let's make a thumbnail now guys oh and that's world tour gear yay yay Warm. morning my friends so today i'm in mersin and i'm gonna do a, a video quite different from usual well some people ask me to if I could do a video about uh, my gears and uh, and the bicycle and and the e-bike and all that so so let's do a video like that I'm gonna present you my um, my bike in this video my e-bike why I chose this e-bike and uh, and the options on the on the on the e-bike and also I'm gonna present you my gears what I I travel with basically so I'm here in Mersin in my fancy hotel room because what's What's uh, nice in Turkey is that uh, fancy hotels are very cheap, basically. I pay $15 for this room in this uh, fancy hotel. So let's go down to see, to, to show you how I park my bike and to, to show you the bike and explain you why did I choose this uh, electric bike. take the bike out so I can talk to you outside without disturbing the people in the in the hotel here is my my e-bike you see it's an Azeb Tie Fly 26 26 because the back wheel is a is a 26 inch back wheel you have the option with 20 inch wheels uh, I, I chose the 26 inch because the guy at the, at the shop told me that uh, well, 26 was much um, easier on the on the uphill, on the dirt road, basically. If, if the track is not, um, if it's gravel with a 20 wheel, if it's too steep, with a 20 inch wheel, it's um, it will um, turn in the empty. So it's better to have that to climb uh, to climb the hill. So basically, the guy told me 26 inch is way better. I wanted to buy this kind of. Um, of a tricycle, a recumbent tricycle. That was, I was sure I wanted that because basically I tried a long journey uh, 10 years ago with a, with a normal bicycle and uh, well I, I saw very quickly it was not for me so that's why I decided this time then I thought I might just travel with like van life or maybe like a Lada, with a Lada Niva or a, or a small motorbike but then at some point uh, I tried, the, my mother bought an e-bike and I tried it, and I thought oh, I've got to try the, the. I've got to try to travel with an e-bike before traveling with a car. So, so that's how I, I decided to travel with an e-bike. So, and then about the e-bike, because it was uh, when I decided to go traveling, it was already the pandemic. So I decided to choose. I skipped all the American uh, brands basically. So that's why I had the choice between Azeb, which is a uh, Czech. A Czech brand for the, these kind of bikes. You have ICE, which is a British a British brand. You have HP Velotechnic. That's the three main uh, like kind of fancy brand, uh, branches for these kind of bikes. In internet, the best comments were for uh, Azeb, so that's why I went for Azeb. Then, why did I choose the some specifications? So basically, I chose this recumbent electric bike because for the comfort, you have a seat to avoid like neck pain, uh, wrist pain. Yeah, for the general comfort compared to the um, compared to a normal bicycle, to a, um, a straight bike, a straight bike. And when I went to the shop to to try the to try the to try the, this kind of bike for the first time, uh, the guy told me it was not much difference between all the branches. So it's it's it, it was up to me to choose the branch. That's why I went for Azeb because it was the it had the reputation of being very robust. And uh, and actually it's true because I have to say I went quite sometimes off-road and the bike survived the bike even survived uh, an attack from uh, from thugs from the, the guys who hosted me who hosted me in, uh, in the Bekha Valley in Lebanon and who tried to to sabotage my bike to rob me probably to rob me and uh, they cut the rack here but despite the rack being cut I could still put all my bikes on it escape from them 
and uh, get the bike repaired away from them. And so basically, <laughs> Exab is very robust. It even resisted the uh, thugs in Lebanon. Sabotage. And my other um, choices, like choices for the for the bike, was basically uh, when I tried when I went to the shop in France and I tried the bike. Um, originally, I did not want the front suspension because it's quite quite expensive. But when I tried and I saw the difference in terms of comfort, it was obvious the front suspension was way better. If I, if I as I could afford it, then it was a way better option. And then uh, the other specific choices I did is like drum brakes because uh, not too much um, not too much maintenance and uh, very similar choice for the for the gearbox which is a roll off and not too much maintenance as well compared to the other gearbox and also um, it it is famous for being uh, almost um, indestructible that's why the roll off gearbox and the drum brakes. And, um, well, I guess for the bike that's it. So we're gonna go back up to to my room to show you my uh, my gears, everything I carry in my bikes. So and yeah, I forgot to tell you also one thing. Um, so you see the bike is parked here. Uh, so basically, yeah, to park the bike, which I did not tell you, to park the bike basically it's quite easy now. In the Middle East it's much easier because people are flexible. So basically what I do is I just ask the hotel if I, where can I park the bike. And, uh, and usually they find a solution whether sometimes they have to fold it, sometimes they don't need to fold it. Yeah, in here at first they asked me if, uh, if I could fold the bike. Then we just try to, to stir it without folding it, and then they say, oh, it's okay like that. So, yeah, in the Middle East it's much easier. Uh, before, usually in Europe what I would do is I would choose a hotel or um, a hostel that has a garden or that says uh, on booking.com that they say that they have a garden or they, or they have like a bicycle storage or something like that. So then there is um, somewhere where you can store the, store the bike basically. Yeah, the other thing I wanted to say, I did not talk to you about the engine. So the engine was at the front of the bike and, uh, and basically the, one of the issues also with the um, front suspension is the problem is because when, when you pedal strongly, the, the, the bicycle starts uh, moving like this and moving up and down and you lose a lot of energy. Part of the energy, of the energy you put in the pedaling is going in this motion and it's not, going to, it's not pushing you forward, so you lose energy. But basically, probably if the bike was not, uh, didn't, did not have an engine, it would be uh, problematic, mm. but because I have an engine, that the engine really is easily compensated for this loss of power. So, and the last thing about uh, about the bike also is uh, my engine is an E six thousand one hundred Shimano. Uh, it was quite actually that's the biggest issue I had because I broke one engine already after 4,000 kilometers in Bulgaria. I had to change the engine in Turkey, so that was a big issue. I hope now with the new engine I did only like 1,500 kilometers, something like that. So I hope uh, the second engine will last longer because uh, that could be uh, that could really jeopardize basically my uh, my entire journey with this e-bike if the engine starts breaking uh, regularly. Uh, so that's the main weakness of, of this kind of bike from, uh, at the moment, I would say, for me. And, um, and for the batteries, you have two choices. You have like five, uh, the, old, the old batteries of Azeb were like 504 uh, watts, watt hour. Um, I have two batteries like that. Now they, they, they changed, just the beginning of last year. Now they, they provide uh, batteries of 630 watt hour. But basically, uh, so when I bought the bike, I had the choice between the two sizes and, um, and the guy of the shop told me, and, and it was completely true, that the battery of 504 watt hour were uh, really enough if you have two. And the problem with the batteries of 630 is that one is still not enough because it's, um, well, it gives you a longer range, but uh, it's not enough to, to do one entire day to, to to, make, to be sure to, to have enough battery for, for, for all the day. 
and uh, so then you still need two batteries but then two batteries they are much heavier than the two batteries of 500 uh, four and four watt hours so and and the 500 and, and the two batteries of 500 and four watt hours are, are already enough to get you through the day whatever uh, is on the way during the day it doesn't matter how many how much climb you have you get you get through the day so so basically it was better to, to, to stick to the 500 uh, watt hour batteries because uh, two batteries of those are enough and two batteries of the 630 would be uh, more than enough and too heavy and heavier so then second part of the video let's show you my gear all the gear I have in my, in my bags basically so let's do bag by bag uh, bag by bag uh, basically, I have five bags. So I have the two front panniers, which are for the front wheels for normal bicycles, but for me they are on the lower part of the of the rack. Uh, two like uh, back panniers, which are on the back part of the rack. For me, all the panniers are in the back of the bicycles. And uh, I have a bigger, uh, like kind of backpack, waterproof backpack from Ortlieb. So they are all all the panniers are Ortlieb. This backpack is Ortlieb also, they are waterproof. Have, I had no problems with them. Heavy rain, heavy, heavy rain, no water inside. Really perfect and after more than six months, more than, after seven months on the road, uh, they are like new basically. So first I will start with this one where I store my uh, camping stuff. So here I have a sleeping bag of, uh, for zero degrees, which is enough. If you don't want to to camp in the snow, then accept that. Uh, I have been camping uh, at uh, probably minus two at some point in Turkey, or well, minus something because the water was frozen in the morning and uh, it was a little bit cold. But it was okay. I mean, so basically that's a zero degree dawn sleeping bag, a cheap one from Decathlon, a French um, cheap uh, sport stuff. And it's uh, it's enough. Then on this in this bag, so what I have is uh, I have all my uh, camping gear. So I have uh, well that's dirty. <laughs> that's um, a pillow and uh, a pillow that you can fold. Kind of well, it's it's with foam. It's made with foam and uh, it's compressible foam. So I have toilet paper, of course. <laughs> um, that's a Therma Rest Neo Air inflatable mattress. Very, very comfortable, quite thick. Uh, oh, that's that's gold. And I uh, have had no problem with it so far because I have a foam mattress. I put underneath this mattress. I, I have a foam mattress that uh, I put. It's stored in the bag. Probably you've seen it before in the video. So the foam mattress is here to serve to, I use it as a chair when I camp and I also use it as a protection for this mattress so this mattress does not get uh, damaged. And so far after seven months it's, it kind of works. That's the, um, how you call it, footprint for the tent. And that's my MSR tent, Uba NX one person. At first I thought it's a little bit narrow, but uh, honestly it's perfect for me now. I leave my, I leave my bags outside the tent. I, I can't put all my panniers inside. If I had a two-person tent, I could put all the panniers inside and that. But uh, now I'm used to putting the bags outside. And usually when you do stealth camping or when you are in the campground, well, nobody's gonna steal your bags. So I'm perfectly happy and with that. The only thing is, yeah, I can't put my, my panniers inside the tent if I feel that I'm, I'm in a dangerous place. But uh, I think even inside the tent, if people want to rob you, they will rob you. <laughs> so that's the thing. Then I have this, that's a very old uh, silk uh, kind of bed sheet, or I don't know. It's a silk bag. And basically that's for inside my sleeping bag, so I don't uh, make the sleeping bag dirty. So when I need to wash, I only wash that, and basically I don't wash my sleeping bag. And so far it's been seven months, I don't count that much, but um, it does not, really, does not really stink, my sleeping bag, so, so it's okay. And I have, well, of course I have a lamp, USB rechargeable, USB rechargeable lamp. 
that's it for this thing. And basically, what I did is like when, like in 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 Beirut, in in Lebanon, at some point, I um, I decided to go to stop cycling because I had the issue with the guys who sabotaged my bike. So I thought I need to hide some for some time until like uh, things calm down and they stop looking for me if they were looking for me. So because so then I thought yeah it was not safe anymore for me to to ride in Lebanon for some time. I had no idea if they were gonna look for me or not, but that was my decision. And then I went to Syria, had a lot of editing. So in the end, I spent one month without uh, cycling. And um, and basically, I took I used this bike as a backpack. I left all my panniers in my uh, in my accommodation in Beirut, and when I went to other places, to Syria and to other places in Lebanon, uh, I used that as a backpack. So uh, my uh, I have a flexible uh, flexible gears. Let's say I can switch into I can become a backpacker thanks to this bag. That's why I took this bag because it's a backpack and I can put it on top of the rack of the bicycle. So I can become a backpacker if I want to stop biking for some time. So that's it for this bag. Yeah, and I forgot to tell you actually also. So in this bag on the side. So I added a lot of things on the outside, so I can attach things on the on the outside. I don't use it that much. I just use those pockets. What I have, that's a locker which I never use. The only locker I use is a, I have a U-shaped locker on the bicycle. Uh, it's enough. I, at first, everybody told me, "Oh, you're gonna get robbed. You're gonna you're gonna have problems." So I had two lockers, had a chain, I had a, a U a U thing. But it's. Uh, it's too much, it's too heavy, and uh, it's always, it's often very complicated to lock the bike, basically. So basically now I almost never lock it. I just put the U in the wheels. I don't even lock it to something physical. I just put the U in the wheels, so, so they can't, the wheels can't turn, so they can't just sit and ride the bike to seal it. So they have to carry it, which makes it more complicated. But in the end, I don't have a, um, that's basically the only, uh, lock I have. I don't lock it to like po uh, poles or stuff like that. It, it's often complicated to find to find a solution like that. Like like here now it's in the in the lobby of the hotel it's it's not attached. Uh, I just trust the guys of the hotel. Uh, it would be too complicated to lock it basically. And the world is much less dangerous than, than what people think so it's not like everybody wants to steal your stuff all the time. And there is another thing also I took because everybody was telling me some. It's funny because I knew that it's fine and it's not that dangerous to travel. That people have wrong ideas about how dangerous it is, how like people will steal you everywhere. But um, I still I took an insurance also for the for the bicycle because the bike is quite the e-bike is quite expensive. Well, the e-trike, but honestly, it's also it's also useless because. Uh, most of the time, in the conditions of the insurance, to, to, for the insurance to cover me, the bike has to be properly locked to something, uh, to something uh, that, that, that is fixed, that doesn't move. And uh, I'm never locking the bike like that because it's too complicated to find a place to lock the bike like that. And I will not let this bike in the streets, uh, even if it's properly locked. So, usually I'm never in, inside the conditions of the insurance, so my, even if I get robbed, basically my insurance will not cover me. Because uh, because it's too complicated to lock properly the bike. So basically, even the insurance is useless. So that's another thing I wanted to say. For in my mind, the insurance is useless. Maybe it's useful only for like if I break the bike, if something, if the bike gets broken. Or get, uh, yeah, they're just insurance for breaking or for an accident. But uh, the insurance for st stealing for uh, against thieves for the bike is is useless because the conditions are too restrictive basically. So I have something like that, the pump to inflate the bike. I have the tripod, which is, uh, I never use it. Okay. Also two other things. So two other things. I have this, uh, that's very useful things. So I have this uh, backpack, completely flexible, that I bought in, a, I think in a website. I don't remember the name of the website. It's, I think it's a website in the US. So they shipped it from the US to France to me. It's a kind of army thing, but it's completely flexible, so I can I can store it in the um, in my big backpack where I put my camping stuff when I travel. But then when I am in a city, I take it out and then I have a backpack. 
a very light backpack where I where I could put things, and it's uh, because it's army things. It's it's something in the army. It's a very um, very strong. It does not break. You see, basically, it's been well seven months. I have it. It's like new also. So army gear, very good. Another thing I bought online also is this uh, kind of bag. I don't know the name in English, but basically. This is for my dirty laundry and it's very useful also, very strong, very resistant. It can and so then I can isolate my dirty laundry from the my dirty cloth from the clean cloth in the in the panniers and so the smell the bad smell does not uh, communicate, does not go from the dirty cloth to the clean cloth. So this bag for dirty cloth very useful. Okay, all the things guys. Ah, I I, I start to like this video. All the um, all the like medicine stuff and that that I store it also in the camping bag in the camping backpack. So I have uh, shaving stuff. Uh, well, which was useful in Europe, but not so much here because uh, now I always go to the barber to get shaved. It's very cheap. Just in front here in Turkey, the barber just for the beard, uh, it costs five lira. It costs thirty cents. Uh, yeah, so it's basically it's it's extremely cheap to get shaved. So I don't use it anymore. But shaving foam, I have like uh, razors which I never use, I don't know, I have those, I bought those razors like nine years ago in Iran and I still have them, I use them from time to time, I have a mask, I have uh, bandages, uh, things for the teeth, to clean the teeth, something I used not a few times in Europe and not so much since then, that's a uh, a magnifying glass or something like that, I don't know, something to see small things, it becomes big. And that's for my mother, that's to watch, to look at lichens basically. But uh, you can use, I, I used it a little bit to film uh, insects. That's not very useful though. Soap from Aleppo, real soap from Aleppo, bought in Aleppo, that's... <laughs> no, but so soap, mm, what do I have? Uh, oh, that's against uh, medicine against allergies because they have allergies. That's for the eyes. Bandages for the eyes and for the nails. I have that for the skin, cream for the skin. That uh, have uh, magnesium for the when I start my hurt, when I start feeling that my hurt is not uh, not beating in a regular way. Sometimes like during like. Maybe 20 seconds. I start feeling that my heart is not uh, is is beating in a weird way. So then it means I have a lack of magnesium. So I start taking this, those medicines to get more magnesium. Usually I try to eat a lot of uh, dry fruits, of uh, dry nuts, uh, walnuts, uh, almonds, uh, cashew nuts, um, because it's full of magnesium. And but. Sometimes it's not enough, I just get some medicines. That's the only medicines I take um, in my life, basically, on my own. Here I have other things, paracetamol, of course, for the headache, well, uh, cotton. For the ears, Tiger Balm, which bought it in, uh, hmm, in Taiwan, I think, probably like maybe eight or seven years ago. Never, I never use it, but I think it's useful. It can. I have it in last risk. If I don't find it, oh, my 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 wrist is painful. I should use it. I'll, I'll keep it. I use it on my wrist now because my wrist is painful. Basically, I have shampoo also in the shower. That's also a shower gel, um, toothbrush. I have the things for. That's also for the for the teeth to clean the teeth. Uh, razor. That might be, or maybe I don't have it, but something very useful to travel is also uh, rehydration, rehydration salts. It's very useful, especially in the, um, in the countries, if you get uh, sick from the food, then the best way when, like, from all the way, everywhere I've been so far, it was not, uh, the food was very clean and there is no problem. So I don't get, you don't get sick from the food, but uh, you get, don't get food poisoning. But if you go like to India, for example, for me, it's in my past travels, 
it's mostly like Ethiopia and India where I got uh, often uh, food poisoning and usually to to stop the food poisoning what I do is I stop eating for 24 hours so that cleans the stomach but basically when you get food poisoning it's it it kills all your uh, intestinal in your intestines in your in your gut it cleans it removes all the batteries basically all the good batteries you have a lot of batteries that works for your work for your body and it kills them all and, and when you get sick they all go away so basically you need to rebuild your intestinal flora and uh, and the rehydration salts help a lot to do that so basically what i do if i get food poisoning is i um i stop eating for 24 hours at least and uh, and, and I, when i resume eating i resume eating very slowly um, Usually fasting is very good for your health. I should do it. Usually what I do it to, to do like a regular fasting is I, I often skip bre breakfast so that um, I get like sometimes like tw more than 12 hours without eating and uh, in a very regular basis. And that helps a lot the body to, to, to stay in good shape. But like a, a proper fasting for 24 hours helps a lot the body. Helps a lot the body to recover from, uh, from an aggression. So basically that's what I do. And when I, when I stop eating, I would only drink water with, uh, I drink a lot of water with rehydration salts and it helps a lot to recover much faster. Because if you don't do anything, if you keep on eating and you don't um, rebuild your intestinal flora, it's, uh, it takes so long to recover basically. But when, why, when doing this, it's so much faster. So that's why I do this. So that's all my, um, all my medicine things and that's all goes with my camping stuff basically. So let's go bag by bag. So now for the next bag, let's go with the small panniers. So the small panniers I divided into two and I have one is with, with food. So the one with food is also has, I also have a, a rope in it so I can, now I use it uh, sometimes to just to dry my, like here, for example, look at that. I have the rope, just put it like that. <sighs> And because here, basically in southern Turkey, and like the same as in Lebanon, it's raining so much in winter. And uh, so basically often and my shoes are not uh, really waterproof. So when I come back, when it's raining and I come back from a walk, my socks and my, and my shoes are completely wet. So then I put this rope next to the, to the AC so then I can dry my socks and my shoes quite quickly because otherwise, uh, the next day my shoes are still wet. In the food I always have like dry fruits, so always reserves of food. Uh, there is a bottle of olive oil. Yeah, I never use it, but it's in case I, I love pasta. If I have a kitchen, I fa have access to a kitchen, I cook pasta and I like pasta with olive oil. Uh, so always some reserves of food. You see I have a box of uh, tuna. I have some still the, oh, that, the, the honey from my uh, taxi driver in Kirklareli when I entered Turkey, when I had to change my engine and take a taxi to Istanbul. Uh, some bags, that's the bag, that's the bag, dry bag where I put the food, but I uh, don't use it much now because food is cheap in restaurants, so I eat in restaurants all the time. That's a bag for water uh, that I don't use anymore as well. Uh, I used it a lot in Europe. Now it's leaking a little bit. It's an old leaf also, but uh, it's the only disappointing things thing from old leaf. It's um, basically, it's, I think the joints in here is not um, right. so the joints in in this part is not uh, fully functional. So basically, if, if I store it like that and it's full, it's gonna leak. So my bag is full of water. So then I store it like that inside the bag, and it does not leak. But now I almost never use it, now I always have, because now you, I, I used it a lot when the uh, tap water was drinkable, but now the tap water is not drinkable, so I don't use it anymore, I just buy, buy um, plastic bottles. So yeah, so the olive oil for my pasta when I have access to a kitchen. My Ethiopian knife that I showed to you in Bulgaria, uh, that I use probably just a couple of times. So it's, uh, it's not really useful. It's more like a, a gadget to, for luck, I would say. And I wait, I wait and see until, uh, until the police takes me somewhere, takes it from me somewhere, because I guess it's, 
it's not uh, allowed to travel with this kind of weapon, I would say, because it's almost a weapon. I have a Swiss knife, of course, that's very useful. Very basic Swiss knife with a corkscrew. And a knife that's extremely useful just for camping. Uh, that's a screwdriver and also a, a can opener. Opener? Tin opener? But yeah, the knife, the corkscrew, very useful. Uh, so that was the bag for my food. Then let's go to the second bag, the second small pannier, which is that's the, the pannier I use for the, um, let's say, for the bicycle things, all the things to repair the bike, all the tools to repair the bike, and like the batteries. So, so in this one I have the charger of the batteries. I have the spare battery. So you can see the other battery is there. And I have the second battery in the bag. Here I have the well I don't use it any much more, but that's the the shaving thing. Well for a man I think it's always probably always important to have something like that because you get dirty when you touch the bike, especially the chain, so you need a rag. A dry bag to store all the oil because basically what I have is I have the oil that's the oil for the chain uh, Shimano times once it was not I did not close it properly so then the bag was full of oil I had to clean everything so now I put it inside a plastic bag so only the plastic bag gets dirty um, I have the toothbrush to clean the chain of the bicycle very very useful and I have that's something I should use soon that's my spare oil for the because that's the only maintenance I have to do for the gearbox for the roll-off gearbox I have to change the oil once a year or every 5,000 kilometers but I did more than 5,000 I did not do it yet but uh, well hopefully <laughs> I should do it soon so I will see, but that's basically that's my oil for the to change the oil for the gearbox of uh, of my e-bike. So everything with oil, I store it in a dry bag. So it's also dry bags from Earthy. Dry bag from Earthy. So yes, yeah, so all the things don't get um, don't get dirty. Here I have a small pocket, like the pocket I bought it from a army website also. Um, with all the things I did not use much. Uh, I don't know how these I think could be useful. Uh, some tape. That's for the chain. I never used it but I might have to use it at some point. I have the, the things like that to open the... Um, remove the tire from the wheel. Which I used once because I changed a spoke once on my own. I have a few Allen keys as well. I just checked the, all the sizes I need for my bike and I just have like one or two Allen key. I think I just have one Allen key, that's the only one I have. Um, because that's the only one that is really useful on my bike and that I don't have on the multi-tool. Because in this bag, which is my bag next to me, the, it's the handlebar bag, but it's, so it's uh, on the side compared to me. That's where I have my passport, I have all my like I have like luck stuff, that's my souvenir from Malula, the Christian village in, in Syria. I always don't like to be superstitious, but I guess in the end I might be a kind of superstitious. So I just keep what was given to me. Saint Basil was given to me in, uh, by Stevan. A Serbian guy when I entered uh, in Kosovo, he gave it to me, so I keep it as a as a protective thing. And here I have pens, uh, markers to write write my name on the panniers, uh, a pen which I don't use much. I don't smoke anymore, but I have a lighter in case. It's always important to have to be able to 
to, to have fire, I use it to basically burn the toilet paper if I go in to the toilet in the countryside. In the wild, I have a locker for the, the lockers in the, in the hostels or places like that. A few keys, that's, that's the only keys I took, only the sizes I need for my bike. So a few, uh, that's what's wrench keys, something like that. Adapters for the SD card. Yeah, that's it. So that's the multi tool also for the bicycle. That's the classical one. I have an Allen key because I have several sizes of Allen keys here, but uh, some size are missing. So that's why I have an extra Allen key for the size I don't have here. And there is a, a basic, uh, well, basic uh, screwdrivers as well, and a few Allen keys. So yeah, so that's it. And so this bag also, I also have uh, my passport, basically, with uh, a small, uh, a small thing like that to put here. So if I go, if I switch, if I become a backpacker, then I can have my passport here when I travel. Otherwise, I have my passport in here because uh, I don't know. Maybe I should have it on me. I don't know. So here I have my passport and my uh, short international certificate of vaccination or prophylaxis. So I have this, the short book. If needed, I can hide it here. Usually I leave it here because uh, usually I don't go through dangerous areas. But, uh, but it happens. Sometimes you are in a dangerous area and you have to protect your, your stuff. Uh, I have something like that, which I tried to use a few, just one or two times in, um, in Turkey. Uh, because too, because people in Turkey don't speak much English, but it's complicated to use. But basically, it's a dictionary with only images, so it helps you communicate with people. You don't, um, you you can't communicate with with words. If you can't communicate with words, then you can communicate with images. So it's a dictionary with images, basically. Useful if you go to a place where uh, actually very useful if you go to a place where people don't speak English or don't speak any language you speak. Uh, a small grigui, mm. that's cedar wood from, uh, from the Kadisha Valley, from the cedars of God. In Lebanon, my protective thing, my uh, pepper spray for uh, bears. Should really clean that, it's full of papers, look at that. Well, of course, the uh, masks, I have masks everywhere. This is, a, this is a book for the electronic book, but I use it as a windshield for my camera, basically. So what I do when I write to avoid having too much um, wind noises when I write with the, with the GoPro, because when I write, I film with the GoPro, which you have here. Which is filming as well, hello. So I film like that. So basically I try to figure out where the wind is coming from. And uh, if the wind is coming from here, then I put the shield like this. And so the microphones of the GoPro don't hear the wind and uh, I don't have I have less wind in my um, in my footage so basically that's that's my windshield for the when I film with the bike that's it for this uh, handle bag oh no I did not finish with the bag of the spare things never used it but if I reach a place where you go to swim I guess that might be useful that's a, a tool to attach the camera around my uh, my chest, but uh, I think it's useless. I thought I thought throw it away. Another a small rope. The other one is very long. The one I showed you for drying things, but a smaller one. I never used it. But people say uh, ropes are useful, so I, don't. I have these also. Uh, don't remember the the name in English. Quite useful sometimes if you want to fix things on the bike. Uh, in the end, I don't use it that much, but uh, can be useful. Uh, that's the things around the pedals uh, that help me keep the pedal, keep the foot on the pedal. Uh, so you, you put it around the pedal, so, so you, you, your foot is kind of stuck in the pedal and does not move too much away. It helps against the knee pain. When, uh, when riding a bicycle. So I have a spare, because for me it's very, very important. Uh, so I have some on my pedals already, but I have spares in case, because I think I can't pedal without that. 
for long distances. Another uh, rag. That's for uh, if I get a flat tire. Never happened to me so far because I have very good uh, Schwalbe Marathon Plus uh, tires. Wow! And there are so many. There are leaves inside. Wow! Oh yeah, and I have yeah here. And I have emergency blankets. I have two. I think that's very important because if you are in big trouble, if it's really too cold, uh, even if you never use it, that could save your life. So that's probably. The most, at least to have one of those, is probably the most important thing to have when traveling anywhere. Emergency blankets, spare spokes, maybe too much, spare um, brake wire, other spare spare spokes. I don't know if it's. Uh, I already use spare spokes, so and I might use soon the spare brake wires because my brakes are a little weird. I need to go to a bicycle shop, so. Yeah, I think that's quite useful. Okay, so that's it for this uh, for this bag. And you can see how well organized I am. You know, <laughs> I like when people show their gears. <laughs> Usually, it's well uh, well organized in that. So yeah, not like that at all. So I also have gloves also uh, that were uh, given to me as a thank you, Christian. Uh, for a Christmas gift, uh, very useful. They are supposed to work with the with the um, with the with the phones, but uh, well, it works with the phone. But when I write, I have an extra a protection on the phone. So with the protection on the phone plus the gloves, it does not work. But uh, very important to have gloves because as soon as it's like below 10 degrees Celsius, it's really cold and uh, my hands are very exposed. So you need gloves. Well, maybe in case that's always useful. I've never used it, but uh, you know, I don't remember. Boussole in French, important. I think important thing if you go hiking, probably important thing to have. So for the, of course, for the, well, I will not show it to you, but I have a computer for the editing of the videos. Of course, a fancy computer, uh, like gaming computer. And so to store the videos, and uh, I also have like two external hard drives. This one is four terabytes. This one is two terabytes. Uh, I've done like maybe sixty or set no one hundred and something videos already. I think so far it's this one is like more than half full, but this one is less than half full. So it's 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 much it's more than enough basically. And I, I, I store the videos on both hard drives, so if one fails, I still have them on one on the other one. Now I go with let's go for the the two big um, the two big uh, big bags. So I have an electronic book which I don't use that much. I use it mostly when camping, but I don't camp that much. Uh, and that's mostly for my cloth actually. So you see cloth. Uh, so cloth usually I have like small, like more like sportswear. Everything, I, everything I wear, don't really care. I mean, I wear whatever I have. That's a merino T-shirt. World Tour Travelers. Look at that. Never used it. <laughs> I don't know. I keep so this is still new after seven months. I've carried it for nothing. I have a shirt. Very nice. Look. If I go out, well, it's short sleeve, so it's not that classy. But look, I have. I can be nicely dressed. I, I used it last time for Christmas in Beirut. Uh, I have this small uh, towel, uh, very nice, very, very useful. Uh, t shirts, shorts. Uh, I have a camera also with a zoom, but I almost never use it. Uh, if I see animals, I use it. Underwear. Shorts. Well, I'll put it on the. Uh, I have my small belt that was given to me also when I entered Kosovo by the Serbian, by Stevan, the Serbian demonstrators. Uh, I hope it will protect me. It saved me. Maybe this one saved me from uh, from my thieves, from the host who tried to rob me, who did rob me a little bit, but who tried to sabotage my bike without success 
maybe this saved me, I don't know, I'm becoming superstitious. So I have the small bell from Serbia, basically. I have, uh, I don't use it anymore, but summer, very important sunscreen also. Uh, well, all the stuff for like private life. That's it. And the last bag. Finally, I thought this video was going to be super short and uh, <laughs> it's endless. All the cloth. Oh yeah, spare. Um, but spare uh, the inside part of the tire. I don't remember the name in English. They have one spare for the 26 inch because my back wheel is 26 inch. And they have one spare for the 20 inch because my front wheels are 20 inch. And here is the power bank. Well, I have two power banks actually. Extremely useful. That's uh, really compulsory. That's where I keep some papers, especially my vaccination, my vaccination certificate for the border crossings. Spare masks, COVID life now. And the last thing I forgot to talk to you, to tell you, for the cold. So basically for the cold, uh, I don't have, th that's the warmer thing I have. So basically I have two like this, I have one jacket like this, another jacket like this, and I have a few warm t-shirts, and I have the, my, uh, my rain jacket. So basically what I do is if it's cold, I just put everything on me and uh, if I don't move uh, maybe it's a little bit cold but as soon as I ride with the physical exercise uh, I don't feel the cold so all the way to unless you want to ride in the snow basically or in um, uh, negative temperatures and freezing temperatures that's enough just what I do is simple I just add layers and um, and honestly it's enough so I guess that's it and last thing is also what I was almost almost lost in Tashuju, but I, I went back like seven or eight kilometers to recover it. My uh, my trekking sandals, super extremely nice for winter, for the winter, for summer, and the tarp to protect the bike when the bike stays outside, and the yellow jacket to be more visible when riding on the roads. And also my rain jacket, very easy, very, uh, very light, very easy to pack. Uh, so that's my rain jacket, very useful here in winter in Lebanon and, uh, and in Turkey because it's raining so much here during winter. So I wear it uh, almost every day. So I guess that's it. So my very organized stuff, let's make a thumbnail now, guys. Oh, and that's World Tour Gear! Yeah! Yeah! Um, let's use the GoPro! So guys, that's it. That's my gear, of course. Sunglasses, forgot to tell you. Uh, that's basically my gear for traveling, to travel the world with an electric bike, an electric trike, recumbent trike. It's been seven months I'm on the road and I'm gonna be on the road for much more time, for a, a lot more time, a lot more years. That's it, that's my gear and uh, so that's the end of this video guys. See you later. Hope you liked the videos, if you liked it, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and, uh, and subscribe to the channel. So I can get monetized at some point one day. Oh my god. <laughs> it's taking forever. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, I enjoy doing these videos. So it doesn't matter. And um, yeah, that's the end of this video. Ciao guys. See you for the next adventures.